Welcome back everyone, Patrick here, moving on to another question dealing with circles. So we're told that a circle has a center at two and five and the points 10 and nine, nine and five plus root 31, and then negative two, negative three lie on the circle. So in part A, what we have to do, verify the points lie on the circle. In part B, state the radius of the circle. And then in part C, we have to state the equation of the circle. So notice that this question, very similar to the previous question, where we're verifying that points lie on a circle, except in this particular video, I'm going to go about it in a slightly different way. Okay, there's multiple ways that you could verify that points lie on the circle. And I wanted to go over this method as well, in case your teacher does this method versus the other one that we did. Just as a review in the previous video, what we did was like this question, we were given the center of a circle, we were given three points that potentially lie on the circle. And to verify that all three points lie on the same circle, what we did was we found the distance from the center to each of these points, right? We found three distances, and then we noticed that the distances were the same. And so once we verified that the distances were the same, it basically verified that that was the radius of one circle. Okay, and that's enough to verify that the points, that any points lie on the same circle. You find the distance, and then if the distance is the same, that's just the radius of the circle. So what we're gonna do now in this video is we're actually going to be finding that distance as well. It's just we're gonna go through it in a slightly different way. We're gonna use the equation of the circle. So just as a review, remember that if a circle has a center at h and k, the equation of it is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared, and that's equal to r squared. Well, notice we're told What's the center of the circle? It's two and five, right? So we'll have x minus two squared plus y minus five squared equals r squared like that. And so what we can do is for each of these points, each of these three points, we could take that point, plug it in for x and y, and then notice we could solve for the r. Right? And we'll plug in all three points. And if we solve for the radius and the radius is the same for all three points, then they're lying on the same circle. So it's actually the exact same thing. It's just that preliminary step is different because if you remember what we were doing was we were finding the distance from the center to each of these points. Well, the center in this case is two and five. And then let's label this as X one, Y one. And then these points, let's keep it general. We'll label it as x2, y2. So the distance, what's the distance formula? If you remember, it's the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Well, x1 and y1 is going to be the same for all three distances. So, so it's going to be x2 minus 2 squared plus y2 minus 5 squared. Right, so we would find the distance for all three. Now notice that this and this, they're the exact same thing, right? Because if we isolate for this radius here, notice it's r squared. Well, to isolate for the r, we could just square root both sides and then notice that the square root of something squared, well, it just isolates for that base. And notice that this formula and this formula, they're the exact same thing. So it's actually the exact same method that we're using. It's just that preliminary step is a little bit different, right? Here, we're using the distance formula directly versus here, we're using the equation of a circle to get to that distance formula, to get to that radius. So it's actually the same method. Again, it's just that beginning is the same. And I didn't want, for example, your teacher going through this and then you getting confused about how does this and this relate. It's actually the same thing. Okay, it's just those first preliminary steps are a little different. But if your teacher is using this method, then feel free to just use this method as well with these points. You're going to end up getting the same radius that I'm getting when I'm doing it this way over here. Okay, so let's, um, let's verify that these points 
all three points have the same radius from that center. So let's plug in the first point. So we'll plug in 10 for x, and then we'll plug in 9 for y. So we'd end up with 8 squared plus 4 squared, which would be 64 plus 16. And so r squared is equal to 80. And then to isolate for the r, we could just square root both sides. So the radius is root 80, like that. Okay, so here the radius ends up being root 80. Now, I'm going to leave it like this. You could also get the decimal if you want, right? Some textbooks leave it as an exact value. And then actually this exact value, you could simplify further. But I'm going to do that in part B, where we have to state the radius. The radius is just root 80, but you could also simplify the exact value. So I'll do that in part B, just in case your teacher expects you to. A lot of teachers won't. And you could leave it like this, or you could just get the decimal, right? It's going to be, it's just under 81, so it's going to be like 7 point something, maybe 7.9 something. I'm going to leave it as an exact value. Okay, so the radius that we get for that first point is... Um, is root 80, so now let's plug in the second point. So we'd plug in nine for x, and then notice the y value, it's five plus root 31. That's an entire number right there. So we plug that fully, right? And then we're subtracting the five, that's gonna be squared. Notice what's gonna happen, the fives cancel out over here. Nine minus two is seven, and then we'll have root 31 to the power of two, seven to the power of two is 49, plus root 31 to the power of two is just 31, right? The square root of anything to the power of two is just whatever's under that square root. And then notice 49 plus 31 gives us indeed 80, right? So the radius that we get is that same root 80 over here. Okay, and then finally the, um, the third point, plug it in, so we'll have um, negative 2 minus 2 squared, right, negative 2 for x, and then we'll have negative 3 minus 5 squared, negative 3 for y. So we'd end up with negative 4 to the power of 2 plus negative 8 to the power of 2. And then notice we end up with that 16 plus 64, 80, so the radius is root. 80. So notice we got the same radius or the same distance. This is the distance that you would get from the center to all three points. It's root 80. It's the same for all three points, and that's enough to verify that those three points lie on the same circle that has a center at 2 and 5. Okay, so that's part A. Now in, um, I'm going to leave this because we're going to need it for part C. Now in part uh, B, they ask you to state the radius, so you can leave it like this. Sometimes textbooks may simplify this square root a little further, and the way you could do that is you can think of a number that's rootable that you can divide 80 by. And so that would be, you could divide it by 4, so we can, you know what, I'll just erase this. So we can rewrite this as root 4 times root 20. Okay, root 4 times root 20 gives us root 80. And so notice that this root 4 is just 2. And then we'll have 2 root 20. But then the root 20, notice that that could divide by 4. So we can rewrite this as 2 times root 4 times root 5. And then we'll have 2. The root 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So 4 root 5. Okay, so that's another way to state the radius. Again, if your teacher doesn't expect you to do this or if you didn't do this in class, you can just disregard this. You can state the radius as root 80 or you can get the decimal. But in case maybe your textbook or your teacher expects you to do this, this is why I wanted to go over it. Okay, so 4 root 5 is the exact same thing as root 80 if you plug both of those into your calculator. Now, what if you didn't want to do these two steps? What if you wanted to get here quicker? Well, you can realize that root 80, you can actually divide by 6, or uh, 80, you could divide by 16, and 16 is a rootable number. So we could have rewrote this as root 16 times root 5, which would give us that 4 root 5 directly, instead of going through two steps, right? 
So you could have recognized that, yeah, you, we could divide it by 4, the 80, but we could also divide it by 16, and 60 is a rootable number. All right, so different ways to state the radius, root 80 or 4 root 5, or if you want to get the decimal, 7 point something. And then finally, part C, really easy. What's the equation of the circle? Well, we would just plug in root 80 for the R value, and then root 80 squared gives us just 80. So we'd end up with 80 on the, um, on the right side. And so that there ends up being the equation of this circle that's centered at 2 and 5. And uh, yeah, that's it for the question.